All right, this is third grade, module seven, lesson two. And in this lesson, students are gonna continue solving word problems in a variety of contexts. And the real focus of this lesson is not so much, hey, let's get the answer and move on. The real focus of this lesson is for students to have the opportunity to share all of the different ways they went about solving this problem. Of course, the answer is essential, uh, but really the powerful part of this lesson is allowing students the space to share how they solve the problem. So let's get started. So for you parents and teachers, I'm really gonna focus on uh, drawing the picture because of course we're supposed to be using that read, draw, write protocol where we're gonna read the question probably multiple times. We're gonna try and draw some sort of representation and then we're gonna write out some sort of solution. And that solution isn't going to be just this one standard nice algorithm. It's gonna be uh, uh, multiple steps in some cases and some alternative approaches as well. So let's get started. So uh, a box containing three small bags of flour weighs 950 grams each, so let's, let's underline that because that seems important. And then each bag of flour weighs 300 grams. Then the question is, how much does the empty box weigh? So what we've got here, <clears throat> one way to draw this picture, is I'm thinking about three bags and a box. Oops, wait, no. Three bags and a box. Oh, so I, I want to really circle that because I almost missed it there. So we've got three bags in a box. So what is that going to look like? Well, we know the three bags are going to be the exact same size and everything. So there's my box. and uh, I mean, uh, that's one bag, that's one bag, and that's one bag. And then the box, and I'll do it in blue. And then the box weighs this much. I don't know. Now you'll notice I, I made it larger than the bags. I don't know. It, it really... I don't know if the box is going to be heavier than the bags. It doesn't really matter. We're just drawing a representation, and that's perfectly fine. Now, I noticed that, um, oh, this whole thing weighs 950 grams. So I'm going to draw a little 950 grams right there. And then it says each bag of flour weighs 300 grams. So if I want... I can put in a 300 grams, 300 grams, and 300 grams right there. And now do we know how much the box weighs? Nope, we don't. So I'm going to put right here, there is my letter B. And uh, because that we don't know how much the box weighs. But we know that if we add up all of the bags of flour plus add the box, we should get 950. So parents and teachers, I'm gonna leave it up to you to allow your students to solve, finish solving this problem. So here, we've got Mr. Cullen, he needs 91 carpet squares. He has 49 carpet squares. Now if the boxes, if the squares are sold in boxes of six, how many more boxes of carpet squares does Mr. Cullen need to buy? Sounds like a multiple step problem. So he needs 91 and he currently has 49. So that, I'm gonna draw a single bar and say he needs 91 and he currently has, and I don't know where to draw my line so I, I'm just doing it a little bit larger than half, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. And he currently has 49. So this is what he currently has. And over here is what he needs. All right. Do we know how many he needs? Not right now. So we're going to put an N. So we know one math problem we could do is N is going to equal whatever 91 minus 49 is. All right. And when we get that answer, we know that we need to then say, well, how many boxes of six, a box of six, a box of six, dot, 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 a box of six, 
how many boxes of six are we going to need to reach that total? Now that total, let's see, 41, 42, is 42. So we know he needs 42 more carpet squares. So the question is, how many sixes do we need? So uh, I'll put, let's see, boxes. I'm going to use B for boxes. Boxes equals... 42 divided by 6, because that's going to tell us how many 6s, how many boxes of 6 do we need to reach the 42 more carpet squares that he needs. Now, Erica makes a banner using four sheets of paper. Each, that seems important, so let's underline it. And then it says each paper measures 9 inches by 10 inches. And what is the total area of Erica's banner? So we're going to start with that first part. She, she makes a banner using four sheets of paper. All right. So let's draw a sheet of paper. There is our sheet of paper. And we know that we need four of them. So there's our four. And I will kind of... Arrange. Oops, I don't need five. I need four. So I'll get rid of one. All right, so here's one sheet of paper. Here's another sheet of paper. Here's another sheet of paper. And here's another sheet of paper. And we are told that each piece of paper measures nine by ten. So what does that mean? That means it's going to be nine inches by ten inches. All right, and so if we were to shade that in, Oh, let's do yellowish. There we go. So this right there is 90 inches squared. So we know we have 90 inches squared. And so we're asked, what's the area of four of them? So let's see. The total area... is equal to 90 times 4. And that's going to give us our total area. Now, how did I get 90? Well, the area of one piece of paper, so the area of one piece of paper is 10 times 9, which is equal to 90 inches squared. And we now need to figure out the total, so that's going to be 90 times 4. And I'm going to leave the, the, that up to you to finish solving. So here, Monica, good old Monica, uh, let's see, Monica scored 32 points for her team at the Science Bowl. That seems pretty important, so let's underline that. Oops, I drew a box around it. That's fine, too. Um, she gets five four-point questions correct, and the rest of her points came from answering three-point questions. So, boy, that's a lot of, that's a mouthful. She got five four-point questions correct, and the rest of her points came from answering three-point questions. Then the question is, well, how many of those three-point questions did she get correct? All right, so let's see. She got five four-point questions correct. So I'm going to draw a box. So that right there represents a four-point question. All right, so I'm going to say she got five of those. So here they are. There's one, two, three, four, five. So there's our five four-point questions. And it says the rest of her questions came from answering three-point questions. So we've got three-point question, and I'll, I don't know, I'll do it in blue. And so let's put that right there. And the rest of our her questions came from blues. All right, blue, 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 blue. And I'm going to get rid of this guy because we don't need it. And let's get rid of this guy because we don't need it either. So let's get rid of that. Okay. And so we've got dot, 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 dot. All right. And that's my drawing. That's how I would draw it. 
And then it says, we know she scored 32 points total, so I'm going to do 32 points right there. And so right here is the question is, how many three-pointers? But we don't want to use a question mark because we're supposed to use um, a letter. Woo! A letter. So I, instead of doing the three-point, I mean, instead of the question mark, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase it. And let's put the number, or the letter uh, T for three-pointers. How many three-pointers do we need? And so really, this is a three, this is a three, this is a three. All right? So parents and teachers, I'm going to leave it up to you to allow your students the time and the space to figure out how to solve this on their own. A key part is going to be to figure out, well, how many points did she score with the four-pointers? Kim's black kitten weighs 175 grams. So there it is, 175 grams. Her gray kitten weighs 43 grams less than the black kitten. That seems important. And then the question is, what is the total weight of the two kittens? All right. So we've got two kittens. We've got the black kitten and the gray kitten. So I'm going to start by labeling B and G, as in black and gray. And I'm going to start by drawing both of them the exact same length of a tape, right there. I'm trying to make them both the exact same. I always, I generally start with the exact same length. And then I go back to the questions and read and see how I need to edit my, my tapes. So at first it says the black kitten weighs 175 grams. So I can put 175 right here. And then it says her gray kitten weighs 43 grams less than the black kitten. So that means these tapes are not supposed to be the exact same length. We know that this gray one is supposed to be a little bit shorter. So I'm going to do some erasing here. And it doesn't really matter exactly how much I erase. I'm just erasing some to show that it is, right here, 43 grams less. All right, so right there. This distance right here represents 43 grams. So if we're supposed to ask, what is the total weight of the two kittens? That's this amount right here. Oops, but I don't want to do a question mark. I want to do T for total weight. So parents and teachers, here's a classic drawing that would represent this picture. And now it's up to our third graders to figure out how to solve this problem. It's going to involve a little bit of subtraction to figure out the gray cat, and then a little bit of addition to figure out the total. And our last problem here, uh, Cassius, that's a great name, Cassius and Javier's combined height is 267 centimeters. So Together, they weigh 267. Cassius is 128 centimeters tall. How much taller is Javier than Cassius? So we know that we've got two characters. We've got Cassius and Javier, and we're told that Javier is going to be long, uh, taller than Cassius. So let's draw that. So Javier is going to be longer than Cassius, I don't know exactly how much longer. It doesn't really matter. So there's my model. And I'm going to go back and it says Cassius and Javier's combined height is 267 centimeters. So that means their combined height is 267 centimeters. And we're told that Cassius is 128 centimeters tall. So then the question is how much taller is Javier. So the real question is asking how much taller, um, I'm going to put H for how much taller is ha uh, like high, height. <laughs> uh, how much taller is Javier than Cassius? So that's really the part that we're looking for. But one of the things that we need to do in order to find that answer is we're going to need to figure out Javier's height. So I'm going to put a question mark there. 
So that is your classic model, although there's other models that students could draw to get this answer. And that wraps up a fun one. That was third grade, module seven, lesson two, where the focus is on word problems and helping students develop um, real confidence in how to draw their pictures in order to represent their thinking so that they can then go solve for the unknown.